So you can have a, a volume, say a database volume, and some parts of the database you're using every day, and you want that on your fastest storage. Well, typically what you do is you put that on RAID 10 and your 15,000 RPM storage, very expensive storage that you bought, and you have to put the whole database there because you want that performance. Well, with Compellent, what happens is, since each page can have a separate rate type, you can have mixed rate types within a single volume, all your writes will go off rate 10 to your highest speed drives. That might be SSD or it might be 15,000 RPM drives. And then, based on the usage statistics on those pages, they will automatically drop down to a lower tier storage, or if some old data is out there and suddenly it's used a whole lot again, that will migrate up. So now, automatically, you don't have to tag the data type, you don't have to do anything. Your data will migrate around in the array to the most cost-effective or the highest performance spot based on how, how you're using the data. And so finally, we were able to accomplish automated tier storage and without uh, something that's simple, everybody can do it. It takes a couple minutes to set up, and away you go. Compellent has another neat feature called Fast Train. Remember I talked about the, when the disk drives get full, your seat times will increase and your performance slows down? Fast Track is a simple license key that you put on, not very expensive, that pushes your most used data to the outer 20% of the disk. But the transfer rate is higher, and if it's your most used data, your head is going to be mostly out here. Occasionally it'll die down for something else, but your most used data is out in the outermost tracks of the disk. So essentially, Compellent's found a way for you to fill your storage capacity and still maintain your performance. Very, very useful feature. Equalogic's uh, claim to fame is their peer storage clustering. It's a very powerful concept. Uh, traditional architectures like EMC or Compellent use two storage controllers and one big stack of trays of drives. And uh, two controllers for redundancy, a little bit for performance. And you can keep adding drives to those systems and you connect hundreds of drives. And that's great. Every time you add drives, you add a little bit of performance that helps. Uh, but sooner or later, you're going to run out of performance in those controllers. And what happens then? Big forklift upgrade. Big step here. This cost level, now you're way up here. Big need to go get a big capital expenditure for that. So what Equalogic has done is they, they said, well, we're going to scale out and up. Uh, and we're not going to do it in those great big steps. We're going to do it a little bit at a time. And we're going to try to scale linearly in performance and cost. And the way they do that is each tray of Equalogic drives has its own pair of controllers. Uh, typically 16 drives, two drives will be hot spares. Typically, you run another 14 and a 2 sub drive, grade 5 sets, strike together, grade 50. Uh, the controllers each have a 4 gig or 2 or 4 gig cache on them, and they each have uh, 2, 3, or 4 Ethernet ports, depending on the model, uh, to connect to the network. One controller's passive, the other one's busy. If he fails, this guy just picks up the MAC addresses and carries on, and he notices the difference. And so, in that environment, when you run out of storage, you have to get another array. You can't just add trays and drive to each budget. You get another array, you plug it in there, and so you double your storage capacity or whatever. But you've also doubled your performance because now you've got another controller working for you, and it has cache, and you've got another two, three, or four gigabit Ethernet ports working for you. So the size of the pipe in and out of your array is the same. And they scale almost linearly right up to 12 arrays in one stack. And the limit of 12 is, is going to go higher over time. Now, the neat thing about that is some of the arrays can be SAS, some of the arrays can be 10K SAS or 15K SAS, and now they have arrays that are either 400 gig or 800 gig of SSD, solid state storage. So there's no drive spin. You never have to wait for the, the data to pass up to the head. SSD drives are about 20 time, 25 times faster than a spin drive. They're also about 25 times more. But it's, it's, it's actually, it's, uh, uh, for typically for about the cost of, of a, of a power array of spinning drives at whatever speed, the SSD is about the rate is the same. So either 400 gig or 800 gig of solid state storage. And so now if you have a performance problem in your SQL Server database, if you write your logs out to SSD storage, your 
performance problem is probably going to go away. Now, it depends on how much of it you can fit in there. And uh, with equal logic, you have to be able to fit the whole volume in SSD storage. Now, Compellent uses SSD too. And, but Compellent, you only need enough space in your solid state disk to handle the writes for the day. Think about that so you can have, have a 200 gigabyte volume and maybe you only need a couple hundred megabytes of storage to write to it each day in terms of changes. You don't have to have a whole volume in SSD, you only need the writes in SSD to get that performance. And can help can stretch a volume across multiple types of drives. And so then uh, SSD becomes a, a real possibility because you buy a few SSD drives and that can cover the needs of many different volumes and, and that'll happen automatically. Uh, third vendor that we had here uh, this this week uh, is REL Data. And REL Data uh, has an interesting concept of a unified storage. So all the SAN products we've been talking about are all block based. So they look like a big desk and yes they're remote but they just look like a desk. NAS storage or file based storage uh, is something that, yeah, it sort of looks like a disk as well, but it's shared. So when you boot up your workstation, you mount your H drive as your home drive maybe, uh, and you're off, you're talking to some file server someplace. That's file service or network attached storage. So REL Data's box can do both iSCSI block access and it can do NAS file access at the same time, same box, very efficient. Also, it's a very high performance platform and is one of the, the uh, few uh, iSCSI storage arrays out in the market today that can do 10 gig ether. So the fiber channel people are all growing. They've been running at 4 gig fiber channel for a long time. Now they can run at 8 gig. Well, guess what? iSCSI's uh, surpassed them. It's now going to 10 gig. And uh, so from a performance standpoint, um, iSCSI can definitely have it. So we're going to compare a few products. CX Tech sells all of these products, the EMC Clarion uh, series, and that's on the list to sort of represent the sort of the old guard in storage. So lots of people, probably some of you in this room, are running EMC. EMC is the number one uh, storage company. And uh, think of EMC storage as almost like uh, IBM mainframe. Kind of old guard, very solid, very reliable, uh, fairly expensive, but it's good solid stuff, very good. Uh, the Compellent uh, Technology Storage Center uh, product, which we talked about with its dynamic block architecture. Uh, the Dell Ecologic PS series for pure storage. And the REL Data 9240i Unified Discussing Storage System. So, sorry about the eye chart here, but uh, e uh, the claim to fame of the various boxes are e e EMC is really the 800 pound gorilla of the storage market. That's the sort of the old standby. Uh, Compellent's dynamic block architecture enables lots of interesting features. Ecologic has its peer storage or clustering concept and real data, it's unified storage, both file and block storage. Uh, EMC and Compellent both use uh, the sort of standard architecture of the two controllers and multiple trays of disk. Uh, Ecologic is an appliance model and you cluster multiple appliances and REL data is a sort of combination of some appliance with some storage in it, but then you can also add trays of storage so it scales out uh, fairly inexpensively. Uh, they all have uh, various iSCSI ports, various number of ports available, and REL data has 10 gig Ethernet. Uh, most of them do fiber channel as well. Uh, EMC and Compellent do both fiber channel and iSCSI at the same time, and that's primary storage. With REL data, you can take an old fiber channel array that you were thinking about taking out of service because it doesn't have the features you want to use and it will front end that so you can connect it to that and it will virtualize the storage in that whole fiber channel array or you can replicate it to a whole fiber channel array. Uh, controllers, uh, several of them have active, active, ecologic and real data are active, passive and real data is active, active is uh, coming next quarter. 